gather near. My name is Letitia James and I am the public advocate of the City of New York and I'm joined here today by one of my assembly members, Assembly Member Karina Kamara, who is chair of the Black Puerto Rican and Asian Caucus in Albany, as well as, as, well as Council Member Kalos and Council Member Rosa, all of us who are very much concerned with regards to this merger. First, I want to thank the 21 uh, elected officials, a broad coalition of elected officials, who signed on to a letter to PSC, basically expressing concerns with regards to this merger and its impact uh, on the internet. And today, there are job seekers who use their free Wi-Fi from libraries to send their resumes. There are children who sit on the stoops of libraries to do their homework. There are tech startups and mom and pop businesses that have to wait for weeks, if not months, to get a broadband internet connection, an absolute necessity in 2014. And the Public Service Commission has an opportunity to fix this. We cannot allow New York to be left behind in the new economy. When 2.9 million New York City families don't have access to high-speed internet, we urgently need to invest in our high-speed internet for in infrastructure. You know, we created the internet in the America, but unfortunately, European countries, uh, we're lagging way behind uh, them in terms of speed. We should not, and New York should not be behind Kansas. We should not be uh, behind other states in the city of New York, like Chattanooga, Tennessee. New York must lead, and it must be affordable. Access is particularly problematic in the outer boroughs and north of 96th Street in Manhattan. We need our city to remain competitive in the 21st century and our economy to diversify with more uh, technological companies setting up shop in New York. And the average internet speed in New York City is less than half that in European and Asian countries and far more expensive. But the PSC can bridge the digital divide by delivering universal broadband as a necessary condition before the Comcast, Time Warner, cable merger. If this merger, valued at $45 billion, goes through, Comcast will become the largest cable, broadband, and media content provider in New York. I've met with a number of companies, and they are obviously concerned with regards to these mergers. These startup companies are really concerned about having a de facto monopoly, having control over content and the access to the internet. Comcast would have overwhelming power in the areas of access and content and pricing to, to customers in New York. Here is what we know. Access to reliable, high speed, and affordable internet is not a luxury, but a necessity in the 21st century. And so we demand that Comcast guarantee the expansion of broadband. We also demand free access, training, and equipment to their broadband services for public housing residents establish training and access centers for every housing complex within the merged entities service area. All senior, youth, and community centers, as well as homeless shelters, domestic violence shelters, elder care facilities, supportive housing facilities, mental health group homes. We need to expand free Wi-Fi services in public parks and in public libraries. Comcast must establish a development training fund to train New Yorkers for broadband information technology construction and operation jobs with an emphasis on hiring local residents. Because of the sheer size of this mega merger, any reasonable New Yorker will have concerns about competition amongst internet and cable providers, or I should say the lack of competition. We must access how our most underserved communities as well as our startup and our emerging businesses will be impacted by this monopoly. We must analyze the possible short and long-term social and economic implications of such a decision. Internet service providers are currently able to charge consumers inflated prices as a result of poor competition here in New York. We need transparency and accountability in the process, and New Yorkers demand the best and most competitively priced um, services. The vote before PSC is scheduled for November 13th. We are urging PSC to incorporate our demands. The next speaker is the Assembly Member from Albany. Ladies and gentlemen, Assembly Member, uh, Assembly Member, my Assembly Member, Frank Kamara. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you to our public advocate for her leadership. And it's my pleasure and honor to stand with her today, as well as my other colleagues in government and city council. And 
many of us, or most of us probably remember from high school English or college English, Shakespeare and the Merchant of Venice, when he said that all that glitters is not gold. And we're here to say that all that looks like it's a value, a merger that's valued at $45 billion does not mean that it has value for communities throughout the state. Unfortunately, in New York State in the year 2014, we still have service deserts. We still have many places that do not have service, but they do have service. They don't have it anywhere close to the speed of many other communities. So we have to deal with this. The Public Service Commission has a legal and moral obligation to stand there and be for the public and make sure that any transaction is not in the name and best interest of multi-billion dollar corporations, but in the best interest of the little person. That child who needs access to technology to increase their education. Those parents that need access to technology to do research or to improve their careers. That's what we're here to stand for today. So we're saying, uh, to reiterate what the public advocate said, the Public Service Commission has a unique opportunity to bridge the digital divide by making sure that universal broadband is a necessary condition before this merger, not after. We can't say this is what you need to do after the merger takes place. It's not to be cynical. Okay, yes, to be cynical. We don't believe it's going to happen. We have to insist and demand that there's certain preconditions before a merger is allowed to happen. And guess what? We know that corporations always say, well, we can't do it. We'll lose profit. We won't be able to make money. Guess what? If we insist upon it, they'll find a way. So we're insisting that they maintain access to those, those areas that have it, the areas do not lose access, but also that we continue to expand access to affordable and quality broadband services for the people that need it the most. We should insist upon that in the great state of New York. We're here as public servants to stand with the people. The Public Service Commission has to stand with the people as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And our next speaker is Council Member Ben Caleb. Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank everyone for joining us this morning on a somber anniversary. Two years ago today, Sandy rocked our city and state, leaving thousands without power or communications for days and even weeks. I'd like to take a moment of silence for those who lost their lives in the storm. We have a tremendous opportunity before us and a tremendous risk because America's two largest cable companies are seeking to merge and New York State and New York City, our nation's number one media market, have the opportunity to make our voices heard. The Public Service Commission must evaluate whether or not this merger is in the public interest. What that means to me is universal broadband that is free and affordable. Universal broadband is a goal, whether it is the President of the United States, Barack Obama, or the Mayor of the City of New York, Bill de Blasio. It is a government mandate that all of us are committed to. With the speed of technology, the digital divide is widening every second, and with it, income inequality. Like water, electricity, and telephones before it, the internet has become a public utility, one built on strong government investment and subsidies. As a public utility, internet providers must achieve the public interest goal of finally having universal broadband. And yet, with one third of New Yorkers who don't have it, according to the Knight Foundation, we've got a problem. Make no mistake, our digital landscape affects every single one of us on a daily basis. The student whose access to the world's knowledge is limited by his or her access to the internet. The single, unemployed mother spending money she doesn't have on broadband just so she can apply for jobs. The elderly couple who must sit outside a library or in a park in the cold of winter just to communicate with loved ones. These are all New Yorkers, and every New Yorker must have the opportunity to access the world's knowledge on the internet. In 2009, 
as part of the Time Warner cable franchise and Monopoly, New York City missed an opportunity for Universal Broadband. While Time Warner Cable refused, Universal Broadband is a priority. Comcast, as part of its merger with NBC Universal, launched Internet Essentials, providing low-cost broadband and computers to children on free or reduced lunch. Unfortunately, as of recently, only 2.6 million families of the 7.2 million low-income families in Comcast service area are actually eligible for the program. And with a number as large as 2.6 million, one might expect a high subscription rate. And yet, only 300,000 families have signed up. That's less than 10%. And so five years later, we have an opportunity to right a wrong and achieve universal broadband. That is our government's responsibility. We need to see improvement from that program before entrusting them with 40% of America's broadband customers. We have another chance to get universal broadband that is free and affordable, protect consumers, support business, and invest in an infrastructure without which this merger is not in the public interest and must be voted down in New York. A merger without any public benefits will leave New York and the United States without competition necessary to provide an alternate that can deliver on the government mandate of universal broadband. The New York Coalition demands specific guaranteed public benefits for the Public Service Commission to consider this merger, including but not limited to universal broadband, to bridge the digital divide, providing free Wi-Fi to NYCHA, schools, libraries, senior, youth, community centers, and expanding affordable broadband center service to all who qualify for means-based state and city subsidies. Improvements in infrastructure, transparency, and customer service to keep New York competitive and ensure residents have effective and reliable cable by reducing wait time, vastly improving service, and reducing customer complaints. Increased transparency around interconnect transmission data to ensure compliance with net neutrality standards and a commitment to an open internet. I want to thank the public advocate for her leadership on this issue, uh, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, the Progressive Caucus co-chairs, Antonio Reynoso, who joins us today, Donovan Richards, as well as so many of our members, Council Members Lander, Levine, uh, Rose, Levin, Chin, Drum, Miller, Rosenthal, Van Bramer, Menchaca, as well as Council Members Ballone and Mizell, as well as State Senators Kevin Parker, Peralta, Hoyleman, and Assemblymember Kareem Kamara, who has already joined us today, as well as uh, Assemblymember Walter Mosley. We're calling on the Public Service Commission to ensure that Comcast truly commits to the public and the quality of their service and the reach of their broadband before granting them immense powers of a merger in New York State. We sent a letter to the Public Service Commission with a sign-on from 22 elected officials across the city and state requesting these goals, and I hope they will give it due considerations in their negotiations. On November 13th, the Public Service Commission will approve or reject this merger, and we are calling on them to only approve it if it extends digital opportunities to all consumers, if it benefits not just big cable, but all New Yorkers, so that we can finally achieve universal broadband and bridge the digital divide. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Thank you. And now the co-chair of the Progressive Caucus, Councilmember Antonio Reynoso. Thank you. I want to thank, uh, of course, our public advocate, Tish James, Ben Cadiz, Karim Kamara, for um, staying on top of this important issue. Uh, for us, it, it's simple. The digital divide uh, is, is a clear divide to us. One third of the families that do not have access to internet are probably or most likely from low income neighborhoods. Information or access to information is extremely important to ensuring that everyone gets an opportunity here in the city of New York. For us to be so far behind is embarrassing. And we feel that we have a social responsibility to stand up for those that don't have a voice and at this moment don't even have information. So we're asking during this merger, or during the merger with Time Warner King and Comcast, that they do their part in being a partner with the city of New York and with the residents of New York and ensuring that we have universal broadband, amongst other things. So as part of the Progressive Caucus, we're standing here today to make sure that we join you know, in the voices and in the fight to ensure that Comcast and Time Warner King do their part. Thank you. Thank you. So our message is simple. 
Internet access is essential in the 21st century. We need to increase speed, net neutrality, infrastructure improvements, public interest equals public benefits, and we refuse to stand behind Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, and Kansas. Any questions? Uh, are you trying to kind of reinforce this letter? So as the members of the city council, we have a contract for services through the franchise agreement with Time Warner Cable, and clearly pursuant to the city charter, the Office of Public Advocate has a responsibility to ensure city services. In addition to that, I chair COPIC, the Commission on Public Information and Communication, and we plan on uh, using that as leverage uh, to provide services. If anyone else wants to respond? I think that all of us testified all over the state. We had three public hearings, and all of us made requests of Comcast, and months have gone by and we haven't heard a response, so we are reiterating it, uh, bringing pressure, telling them what the government is demanding, and uh, hoping for a response, and we'll be working closely with Public Service Commission, and our coalition is only growing. So we have expressed our concerns to the mayor as well as to the governor of the state of New York, and we are confident that the mayor and the governor share our values and believe that uh, internet access is essential to the 21st century, and that it's really critically important uh, that they incorporate all of our demands uh, as part of their merger. Uh, we wouldn't be here without Governor Cuomo. It was his mandate in the Public Service Commission that requested a review of the merger to see if it was in the public interest. Uh, we're just here to make sure that the message is out there, that uh, in order for this to be in the public interest, there must be public benefits of universal broadband. And again, this is a mandate from the President of the United States as well as Mayor Bill de Blasio and uh, also our public advocate. So uh, we're all in this together and we're looking forward to a strong partnership in making this happen. Let me just say, it's a huge market share in New York huge market share, and clearly the public benefits should be put on the table, and clearly net neutrality. Individuals are very much concerned with respect to uh, this monopoly having a control over content and access, and that's really critically important. And it really is unfortunate that young children have to sit outside of a, a library uh, to basically tap into the Wi-Fi. In the 21st century, that really should not happen. You guys have called for an additional um, service center in at least one of them. Well, we've asked for a number of things. We've made a demand of a, a number of initiatives. They're all incorporated in the letter, and again, we're hoping that they incorporate this as part of their merger. But it's really critically important uh, that all of that we uh, provide, expand broadband services, infrastructure, opportunities to access to the internet uh, to close this divide that we're seeing in the city and the state. Uh, the customer service centers are just one piece of it. Uh, we're looking to see uh, metrics around to provide consumer protections. So whether somebody uh, chats, emails, calls online, uh, or goes to the center, we'll be able to track consumer uh, service and make sure that we have adequate consumer protections. But uh, as much as we want to talk about Government 2.0, it all starts with actually having a location in your borough that you can go to instead of having to schlep across the city and find another location that may be far off and too remote to get to. And I, I want to underscore what Councilmember Cable said. Internet Essentials has only reached around 300,000 uh, eligible consumers, and clearly, uh, clearly we can do better than that. 7.2 million families are eligible, and only 300,000 have, have signed up. There's something wrong with that. We really need to expand opportunities uh, throughout the state. Is that in the state or in uh, it's 7.6, of uh, 7.6 uh, low-income families, only 2 point, give me one moment to just check the notes, uh, of uh, 7.2 low-income families, only 2.6 of the families are uh, eligible, and 300,000 families have signed up, and that's a national statistic. Thank you, folks. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.